Hello, Susanna Cole here from The Good Property Company, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about the importance of getting dressed. Um, no, not that kind of getting dressed. This is all about property and why you should get property dressed. So for renting, which um, we're looking at HMOs, why do we spend so much time getting our properties dressed? Easy. Is because we want no voids. We want our photos to stand out well ahead of everyone else's photos and we want those photos to attract tenants to phone us up to book viewings. It's kind of simple. So if, if you look at the normal landlord photos, they're horrific. They're like stripy mattress, uh, you know, half hung pair of curtains. I mean that's a hugely attractive place to live, isn't it? So what we do is we spend a lot of time early on when we've just finished an HMO we get it beautifully dressed, beautifully laid out, beautifully presented. We then, to be fair, take back the candles, the flowers, the duvets and all the rest of it because we don't actually leave the kit with the tenants. But what it means is we've got those photos for the next 10 years. Now I'm going to walk you through a house that we've done and show you physically some of the, the ways that we lay that out so that you too can do the same thing. We also get a professional photographer, and that's also terribly important. I'm no good at photography. Why would I be the best photographer? I'm good at property. And that is a heck of a hassle. But why is it worth it? Because if we put the work up front for the next 10 years, we have one set of photos we reel out every single time, and we stay ahead of every other landlord on any kind of letting portal, and we get the most amount of calls, the most amount of viewings, and we rent the property super fast. So come with me and I'll have a good look at what we've done. So, so we are going to take you through this house and we are going to start in the kitchen. Why are we starting in the kitchen? Because that is where UPAD, who is the uh, advertising portal that we use the most successfully, tells us that most tenants will click on first. So if you are thinking about the order of your photographs in terms of dressing and in terms of how they're going to look online, you want to lead with a kitchen shot then a living room shot and then your bedroom shot. So here we are. My classic bottle of wine. Uh, I am putting that, proper, that bottle of wine into lots of properties before we drink it, only for fun. We have laid the kitchen out as if it was ready to be lived in. So uh, Jess is behind the camera, by the way. So you see the bottle of wine. We've got uh, pots and pans, which suggest that tea is being made. We have a really nice city view out there. And then we've set the table. And we simply set the table in a fairly simple way, but it allows you guys to see how a table could be set, how life could be lived with just a tiny bit of pizzazz. It, it's not over the top. The chairs are from Tesco, the table's from Ikea, the bottle of wine's probably Marks and Spencer's, the pots and pans are Asda, uh, and the lamp back there is Asda. So everything is high street, but it's just laid out rather nicely so that you can understand it's not just a kitchen, but it's a kitchen dining room. Next, I'm gonna take you to the living room and then we're gonna go upstairs to the bedroom so we're just gonna talk through dressing. And now we're in the living room. Living room should be your second photo that you put up. And again, if you have a look around at this room, um, in the most lovely way possible, there's nothing special. We have white walls and beige carpet. Uh, it's a mild beige carpet. The reason for that is if we're putting tenants in, we don't want something with a flat color where as soon as they spill something, it shows. We want something that's gonna give us a bit more wear and tear. Practically speaking, just a little tip for you guys. We, we had an investor day here last week and everyone was like, oh, love the carpet. It's 5.95. It's completely made out of plastic. But what is interesting is we've got a 14 mil underlay. And as you walk into this property, the 14 mil underlay makes you feel that the carpet is kind of quite luxurious. Now, in 20 years, I am not gonna change my 14 mil underlay. Normally it's like 10 or nine millimeters, but I am gonna to have to repeatedly change my 595 mottled carpet when people get stuff spilled on it, probably every three to five years. But by having a, an underlay that feels luxurious, you, it's just a little tiny psychological trick that the whole thing feels rather nice. Now let's just talk through, we've got a very nice and rather trendy 1950s style sofa. Very cool, where from? Tesco, I think $5.99 or $4.99, nothing special at all. And if you notice our colorways, we basically have a lovely strong blue and purple, almost like a duck egg kind of greeny blue and purple. And those are what you call colors that pop. So what you want when you're dressing a property is not to go crazy, uh, not to have lots and lots of colors, because then it's just, 
the mind looks at um, beauty being uniform and rep repetition. And so what you want throughout a house that you're dressing is have everything beige, white, bland, boring, but still nonetheless quite nice, like the Tesco uh, sofa. And I'm not being rude about it, I'm just telling it straight. And then on top of that, you add in two accent colors. And you'll notice throughout this house, the two accent colors are the same. So here we have kind of lilac purple and the strong blue color. In other houses, we have uh, olive green and purple. And in other houses, we actually have gray and mustard. But we make sure that we don't change the colorways between the living room, the kitchen and the bedrooms. As you walk in, the entire thing has got the same tonal accents throughout the entire house. And there is something around that uniformity that is really quite useful to people. They take it in, they comprehend it, they comprehend it and it feels almost more beautiful. So again, I'm just gonna go through where everything is. Oh, and one little tip, um, you can probably see Jess. Hello, there you go. Um, we have we have we have, <laughs> we have numerous mirrors in every room. They're fifteen quid from IKEA. In the nicest way possible, they're nothing special, but they bring a lot of light in. Uh, our, our cushions are from Asda. Um, our lamp, which is rather flash, is from Habitat, which is nice. And our tables are called Kilo, and they are from Habitat as well. Then we have multiple candles, which clearly we remove immediately for the tenants. And then the rest of the cushions are Asda and B&Q. And I kind of went a little bit owl-tastic this time. So we just have a few things that are kind of quite fun and quite nice and quite lively and quite young. But everything, once again, is Tesco, Asda, B&Q, Ikea. Nothing expensive in any shape or form. Next, we're going to do bedroom. So here we are in the master bedroom upstairs. And do you remember what I was talking about, about bringing the same tonal colours right throughout the house? We got it again. So we have the duck egg blue in the curtains. These are from the range, which again is a very inexpensive location. And then we have the purple and the duck egg blue on the cushions. Uh, the purple cushions are from Asda, actually as are the blue ones and as is the throw. And then we have, I have to tell you, that's a very old duvet cover. That's rather old. So we have the same two colorways right throughout. And again, we have it just here. I think, Jess, you have to come with me just a little bit. Now they're like a pound from Asda, but what they do is they tone in really beautifully and it just gives the person who's viewing that sense of kind of continuity and everything in its place. Now, as you guys have seen some of my other videos know, we usually have the tray, the breakfast tray on the bed. And that is when we're selling a house. But here we're talking about buy to let, and we wanna, we wanna actually style this house up just as beautifully for buy to let, but we don't need to suggest sex so often because um, normally when we do a buy to sell, we put that on the master bedroom because she's gonna be choosing the house and he's just needing a little bit of a reward. But here we're still suggesting breakfast in the bedroom, but we've popped it up here. Now these, I'm not a massive fan of, I have to admit, but Tiffany and my team insists on buying them and she's absolutely right. They are, in my view, fairly horrific plastic flowers from Asda, 12.99, but they actually look great in photos. They look really good. And once again, we've got a mirror, so we pull everything up. Now. Two other final things for you to notice in our photographs are beds. They're something like 109 or 129 pounds from Tesco. <laughs> Jess doesn't know I'm going underneath the bed, but <laughs> go on down. But do you notice the thinness, if you like? I don't think that's the right word, but you can get your hand all around. They're thin, they're slim. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to give an illusion of space. We don't want those very heavy, masculine leather beds. We want something that you can move around. We got a small the chest of drawers. For a bite to sell, we would actually have something slightly more upmarket, again with thin legs so that you can see the air circulating. But because we're doing this as a buy to keep, we want to make sure it's solid. And that's from IKEA. And then for our photographs, we've got a chest of drawers here. Um, and that again, it matches in. And do you know what? It's IKEA and we do them all the time. And the reason is we can mix and match all the ranges without worrying if somebody wrecks something. Now, for a buy to let, which is what this is about dressing, for the photographs, we don't put a wardrobe in. When we're viewing it, we will put a wardrobe in, but this is ready and it actually has been photographed. And so we just want to show just a little bit more space. So there you are. If you want to do a quick panorama, we have tonal shots, we have furniture with space in it, we have loads and loads of cushions, which frankly go straight back in the bin bags, ready to pose the next one up. 
We have lamps beside the bed. We have really rather lovely curtains, which we do leave, but they're about 40 quid from the range, so no big deal. And we just have a little bit of lifestyle shot just to suggest fresh flowers, even though they're plastic, uh, and a lovely coffee first thing in the morning. And that just allows that kind of whole sense of freedom. <laughs> I'm just going to move over here for Jess. That whole sense of freedom and whole sense of kind of well-being and almost show home like. Now, we do this, it takes us four days, you know, this is not something you do overnight. To dress a property, Tiffany will iron the beds, iron the duvets, she will iron the sheets underneath. I mean, we go to quite an extreme, but the reason for that is we do that work once for four days. We get the photographer in to take the photos and we have the photos for the next 10 years. And like I said before, our job is not necessarily to have the best photos in the world, but to have, I suppose, best, better photos than every other property that's currently on the market. And when you dress something like this, generally you do. And why is that important? Because the internet is where about 98% of tenants look. They are gonna click on photos, click on images. We, the, to, this morning, we did an improvement. We've got some rooms that are just coming up for the first time to let. And they were going a little bit slowly and I was very unhappy about that. And what Ali did in my team was double the number of photographs on UPAD flying out. He had 17 inquiries overnight. Whereas the day before we'd about five inquiries, all it was, he added more of our photographs. So that is the power of photography and that's why you take your time to make sure you've got a beautifully dressed house that is really well lit for your photographer to come in and take photos on. It's well worth the effort. Put the effort in early and get it rented out for basically the rest of its life before you have to do a proper refurb. On refurbs, we refurb every five years and then we do a major refurb every 10 years because in 10 years time, the trend will not be now and we'll need to do a new set of photographs. We will not take photographs for 10 years. So I'm happy doing, well, I'm happy having my team do four days worth of work for 10 years worth of renting out a property. And here we are in the second bedroom of this property. Now it's gonna come as completely no surprise to you guys. What have we got? Beige carpet white walls. Now why we do white walls? No cutting in. So for those that have not run a refurb before, cutting in means uh, the white in the ceiling and often the magnolia in the walls. But when you have white walls throughout, they can just paint right through and there's no cutting in so it's faster. And if it's faster, it's cheaper. It's also more modern, but mainly it just saves money. Unsurprisingly, because you're probably used to this by now, what's our two tonal colours? In this one, it is duck egg blue and purple. So we've got duck egg blue in the curtains, we've got purple in the um, candles there. We just put a few little very, very inexpensive ornaments just to suggest a bit of lifestyle. We've got a really funky city view, which Jess and I totally love. And then coming back, we have the same bed. And again, from Tesco, it's just over £100. We get our mattress from Mattress Man. Uh, and they get delivered within 24 hours. The same lamp, and the reason we do repetition is partly it's just easy, isn't it? You just buy in bulk. But also, again, do you remember I talked about continuity on the eye? What is continuous and repetitive is actually viewed as really rather beautiful. Something that's a face that's uniform is, is supposed to be a lot more beautiful than something that's a bit, you know, lopsided. And then we have lilac and purple cushions with duck egg blue cushions. And again, we generally tend to go for a white duvet and we iron everything. So practically speaking, maybe I'm speaking to the guys more than the girls, so forgive me. Tiffany will come in here, she will steam the curtains because when you pull a pack of curtains out, um, they are gonna have folds and creases in them and that will not come out well in the photography. She will steam the duvet, she will steam the pillows, she will puff and plump those cushions like a banshee. Uh, she will actually even, even steam the sheets underneath. We actually make the bed up fully and properly, just in case anybody fiddles with it. Uh, and then she will dust uh, everywhere, make sure everything is absolutely immaculately clean. For refurbs, we will always change things like ceiling lights and, um, and plugs. On this one, we didn't actually have to rewire, but we always make sure we put in new plugs, uh, or sockets rather. Why? It's like, I don't know, 15 pence or 30 pence or something. The reason is it just feels really fresh. So we have a 140-year-old house that, frankly, in a nice way, looks brand new. And that's what you want. You want an immaculate, just done, just finished, so clean you can still smell the, plate, the paint, immaculate finish. That's so really just like uh, something from a shop. 
And how do I know it's like something from a shop? Because to be honest, I go in and I copy what the shops are doing. If the shops and the magazines are telling me that duck egg blue and purple are in, I'm going to use those colours for a full year. So what we do is we actually set out on January, we set out a colour palette for an entire year and then we buy to that colour palette so that everything can be mixed and matched. I mean, I've got six houses for sale right now, plus two houses that have just finished for rent. So that's eight houses worth of furniture and, and therefore everything can be mixed and matched together. So I don't get complicated and think, oh, that cushion has to go with that one. No, it's all together. And then for a whole year, we will push out, if you like, that look. And then the following year, we will reconvene, check out what's trendy and do it again. What kind of resources do you need? Next Home, John Lewis Home, um, House of Fraser Home. We subscribe to Living Etc, which is a really good house magazine, just to see kind of the early adopters, what is going to be interesting going forward. Um, and then we go to places like IKEA and we buy the kit. If you're no good at understanding how to lay out a kitchen, you don't need to be. Just go to IKEA, photograph the whole thing. They're so nice, they tell you exactly where to get the labels from. And, and go and pick everything up and then come into the house, get your photograph out on your phone and go, right, um, what goes where? And just lay it out. Because in a nice way, you and I are property developers. People from IKEA have got PhDs in design and product design, and we don't. So why not follow the experts' uh, point of view and then bring what they perceive as being kind of trendy into your location so that you can get the edge on every other landlord? Speak soon. Hello, you've got two of me now. Uh, all I want to do here is just show you how many mirrors we use in every property. We like the uh, mirrors from IKEA. These guys are £15, so inexpensive, and we pretty much place one or two mirrors in every single room. So for 15 quid, uh, we are putting in lots of light um, and a suggestion that that could be a picture without actually putting a picture in. So why do I not put pictures in? Because Something that I might think is really nice, a tenant might walk in and just go, oh, that's awful. And I don't want people to come in and, and be put off by my taste. So I want to put in the most neutral things possible and yet have still a bit of personality. So that's why we go for duck egg blue and purple because we're popping, it's called color popping. Um, but at the same time, we put in kind of neutral framing that gives people uh, a lift as they walk in without them thinking, you know what, Suze, your taste in pictures is horrific. So coming through, we've got one mirror in the hallway. We actually, we're going to go and visit the bathroom. We've actually got a downstairs bathroom, which is unusual, but financially it didn't make sense to lift it for an upstairs bathroom. And then we've got our second mirror there. And I should just make sure I can get into the bathroom okay. And then we just dress the bathroom. Now, clearly for renting, we do not leave all of this stuff in the bathroom, but we just make it pop again. So dress it with a lovely towel. We usually use a branded towel from something like John Lewis. We've got some nice candles. For safety's sake, we definitely, definitely do not leave the candles there. And then we've got another hand towel here. Um, so all that's doing is suggesting to the tenants that potentially they can have quite a warm, nice environment. Oh, and guess what? <laughs> Here's another mirror. Now, do you, do you see that mirror just pops the room? We've got purple here and actually we've got lime green. We probably ran out of duck egg blue ca candles, but really I'd have preferred duck egg blue. And it just allows the whole bathroom to have almost that bit of humanity and that bit of being lived in. So we've shown you two bedrooms. We've shown you a kitchen, a living room and a bathroom. We've got a, a, a kit that's cost about £3,000 to move in. So what do we do with that kit? Well, if we're doing an HMO, we will leave all the furniture, but we will strip out all the soft furnishings. We do not leave the soft furnishings for the, for the tenants, and we make that very clear to them in the first place. And normally, if we're doing viewings for tenants, we will simply not even leave the soft furnishings for when they're actually doing the viewings. We only want the soft furnishings in for the photographer. So literally, I've had, I've had moments where Tiffany has dressed the room the day before, the house the day before, the photographer comes in at eight o'clock and the tenants move in at half past two. That's happened frequently because we want to do things really fast. So she is moving ahead of the photographer, particularly if we've got a five bedroom HMO. We will take two rooms worth of soft furnishing and Tiffany is only 15 minutes ahead of the photographer setting up the next room while he's photographing the last room and she's moving the other furniture or the other soft furnishings into the next room. So she, we are, you don't actually need for photography purposes, five bedrooms worth of soft furnishings.
For an HMO, you clearly need five bedrooms worth of furniture, but you probably only need two to two and a half bedrooms worth of cushions, candles, kit, you know, plastic flowers, um, uh, carafes and coffee and mugs and such like. Just move ahead of your professional photographer. Would I ever not have professional photography? No. For me, it's an absolute dead cert. Our photographer comes in with his Apple Mac. He's got um, very good lights, but also he's able to digital di say the word digitally enhance the photography, and he does it there and then on site. So Tiffany is approving the photographs before he moves on to the next project or the next room. So we know we are getting amazing standout photographs before he's ever left site. For us, he costs us £200 and he's in for about three hours, maybe four hours maximum. Um, and that's a cost because we use them so frequently. So in your area, you may get somebody for less, you may get somebody for more, but you want to have a look at how good they are and make sure that you get final approval. And also make sure that you get the copyright for the photographs so that you can use them again and again and again. There we go. really enjoyed our run through of physically seeing properties. You're very welcome to come up and see our properties. We do open days once a month and then you can see them yourself. But for you guys, good luck. I hope everything goes really well with your HMOs. Um, it's the fastest way to financial freedom. And uh, good luck in your property journey. Bye.